Hello, and welcome to New England Escapades. Today we took a trip to the Museum of Science in Boston. Here's what we learned on our adventure. Officially founded as the Boston Museum of Natural History in 1830, the museum went through a number of temporary locations before settling in the Back Bay neighborhood. After adding a library and a children's room, the museum changed its name to Museum of Science in 1939. A few years later, the Back Bay building was sold. Under the leadership of Bradford Washburn, the museum negotiated with the Metropolitan District Commission for a 99-year lease on the land on the Charles River Dam Bridge, now known as Science Park. The museum pays a dollar a year to the state for use of the land. Construction and development began in 1948, and the museum opened in 1951, arguably the first all-encompassing science museum in the country. During its earliest years in its current location, the museum boasted a portable planetarium. A version of this planetarium is still in use and visits many schools in the area. The museum was also home to Spooky, a great horned owl. He lived to the age of 38, in the process becoming the oldest known owl of his kind. In 1955, the Science Park MBTA station opened up across the street from the museum, making access to it even easier for the residents of Boston. Throughout the years additions were made such as the permanent Hayden Planetarium, the Muga Omni Theater, and of course a number of rotating exhibits. In 1972, a life-size replica of the Tyrannosaurus was acquired by the museum. However, as our understanding of how the animal lived came to pass, its upright posture was no longer scientifically accurate. A new Tyrannosaurus replaced it, with its posture correctly demonstrating the animal's need for balance. The old Rex now sits in front of the museum and is currently wearing a face mask. Today, most of the modern and updating exhibits in the museum are in its western blue wing. Exhibits such as Colossal Fossil, Triceratops Cliff, To the Moon, and the Theater of Electricity can all be found here, along with countless other exhibits and even a 4D theater. This is likely where the bulk of your visit will take place, so be sure to allot plenty of time here. The Green Wing on the other side of the museum features live animal demonstrations, as well as an exhibit on New England habitats and the animals that can be found there. Additionally, you can find the Hall of Human Life here, showcasing interactive exhibits focusing on the human body. Following the Red Wing will lead you to the Hayden Planetarium and Muger Omni Theater. There is a live animal exhibit here as well, in addition to a temporary exhibit hall. The local favorite sculpture Archimedean Excogitation can be found here as well. Also in the Red Wing are a gift shop and the museum's eatery. Given how much there is to see and do at the Museum of Science, it makes sense to plan to spend a full day here, and the food is actually pretty good. You can bring in your own lunch as well, and there's plenty of seating. To truly see everything, we would recommend spending 3-5 to five hours at the Museum of Science. It's extremely accessible, with a Green Line MBTA stop directly across the street, and it is easy to get to from both Route 93 and Starro and Memorial Drives. There is a large parking lot connected directly to the museum, so even on bad weather days it's easy to get into the museum without getting too cold or wet. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and keep on adventuring!